Hi, Shazia. Hi, Debbie. Thank you for sitting down with me on this. This is part one of a series talking about your three decades as an artist. Mm -hmm. So this is going to cover the 90s, really. Mm -hmm. But really, I'd like you to start to at the beginning before you even got to sort of doing a diploma what got you to that point okay so i did my gcse's um and i um i found i, I was dyslexic and i found doing english and maths extremely difficult i had a very good art teacher and i realized that i if i dedicated myself to really learning to draw properly and um, excelling in art i could get a really strong GCSE, but also in doing that, I built up a really strong portfolio at the age of 16. So at 16, my art teacher suggested rather than doing our A-levels, go and do a diploma in art and design. So I was interviewed at Rygate School of Art and Design in 1990, and I got in, which was great because it was quite a, they selected only a few. So I was actually 16 and in amongst quite mature students for my age. And what was really interesting about being with mature students at the age of 16 is their complete dedication and their work ethic. It was really interesting to be in that environment. So that was a good kickstart. So did that for two years, built up a really strong portfolio in those two years and specialised in fine art painting. So you do your diploma, you'll do animation, you'll do photography, you'll do a bit of illustration, you'll do all sorts. Then I applied to Surrey Institute of Art and Design to do the fine art painting course. It was quite a difficult, again, interview process, got in to do fine art painting, which was a great course, um, and started doing my degree. And so was it purely your portfolio that got you in, or is it the yeah. interview was a really major part of that? Interview sort of demonstration? portfolio is a major part to getting into any art establishment anywhere in the world, anywhere. Your what do you think they're looking one. for at that point? When the Dedication interview... and hard work, Great. simple as that. Yeah. Great, so diploma, degree. So yeah, so during my degree, yeah, let's I, see. I sort of... It was it very much in the first year you're learning how to draw, so it's a lot of a lot of nine to five, lots of lots of um, life drawing classes, very very intense drawing, um, where you're just really building up your skills to learn how to draw in a figurative format. You're introduced to maybe silkscreen printing and other things, but I was very drawn to uh, mark making and painting. I was really into painting, and I discovered. A trip to Scotland I think in the first year of my degree I went up to Scotland and I started sketching but also looking at artists like Constable you know Constable was a really good starting point and inspiration Turner looking at how they approach their canvases and then got on to artists like Patrick Heron Patrick Heron and Peter Lanyon were a part of the St Ives group where they used to manipulate paint in order to express a particular feeling or sense of place they weren't quite so figurative with their output so that's Patrick Heron's work so when I started sketching having all these sort of particular artists in mind for me filling sketchbooks going into the land drawing from the land was very I mean this goes back how old is this sketchbook this is January of 95 year two so this is me starting my, literally, just starting my artistic journey into exploring what is it that mediums can do on paper? What do these particular mediums do in their physical sense? But what do they, what do they, what is their output? What's their placed onto the paper? What, what kind of feeling do, do you get from them? Um, and that's when I started exploring atmosphere with marks um, and just drawing on location, experimenting, trying to create a sense of drama using inks, whatever. And I filled thousands of sketchbooks, just, just learning wow. how to, you know, what, what does that paint do? What does that paint do? What does that brush do? What does that colour do? Why, why does that work? How does that work? constant 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 investigation I mean there's sketchbook after sketchbook after sketchbook and what this allowed me to do was to create 
a particular visual language using particular mediums. And when I talk about visual language, I'm talking about trying to find my unique way of painting um, that expresses my view on the world. So my unique way of applying paint onto a canvas. It's just what they and refer to as like the artist's voice. Yes. In a yeah. way, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so what? So the only way of doing that was was literally sketchbook after sketchbook and really exploring paint, mediums, colours. So that's full of full of sketches. So that was the degree phase. So I haven't got any of my degree work because it's sold. The the whole degree show sold um, wow. in my final final year which was great and that was at the point where I thought that's interesting um I'm going to apply to um a master's program an MA program and it was suggested sort of during my last term of doing my degree that why don't you go and do an MA and I thought yeah I don't want to stop I want to keep going so I found out about the MA program in Barcelona through the Winchester School of Art so you we lived in Barcelona for the year which was incredible being amongst all that type of art. Um, again, an interview process. I think 300 artists applied and only 20 got chosen for the master's programme in that, at that time. Um, and set off to Barcelona, again, being surrounded by extraordinary artists. And learning to develop your own unique visual language is has to be supported by looking at artists. And Anthony Tapies was a very famous Spanish artist whose studio was down the road from where we were. Um, just beautiful, beautiful work. So we were exposed to some of the best artists in the world and best artwork in the world, living in Barcelona and working in Barcelona. So that was very exciting and that enabled me to really fine tune my process. So what I was doing, I became much more interested in particular process based painters like Mark Francis, James Martin, Callum Innes were a huge influence of, of, of the way they approach work. And what that meant, process based painting meant, is that the process within the painting holds your attention and it, it is the art, if you like. That's, that in itself is enough. So that brings me on to my process-based work. So that's one piece left from my master's uh, programme. Wow. Um, so that's really old. And what this painting represents to me is, it's, it's process, it's basically the exploration of um, chromatography, applying paint in a particular way that does something else. It not only creates a sense of light and drama and does other things in its abstract representation, it's, it's, it, so in its, in its use of abstract representation, it is also giving the viewer something else, like you're, you can absorb yourself into the paint. You're kind of, you know, you're thinking, what is that? Is that light behind that? Or, or for me- with Is that the painting, original orientation that you, worked on it sorry is that the original orientation or like portrait it doesn't matter with process-based painting okay i think it's up to the viewer i mean it could go any way um it, there's no particular way but the point being is that it's the paint that speaks the subject if you like it's what the paint is doing is the thing that draws you into that piece um which is very much what mark francis does james martin um, and so that for me was how I ended my master's programme. Um, yeah. Fantastic. 